Okay, so I'm going to talk to you um, today about some, some techniques that you can use um, with coloured pencils. This is not exhaustive, this is just a few of the things that you can do with them. Um, first off, if you're new to using coloured pencil, um, the way you hold the pencil actually makes a difference to the mark that you make. So when we're writing, um, we tend to hold our pencil like this, and if I write my name, um, that's and you can draw like that as well. But most coloured pencil artists, if they want to get this kind of effect, they will hold the pencil more vertical to the paper and they will make little circular motions like that. And they will keep rotating the pencil and that way you fill up the tooth of the paper in a more even way um, rather than doing it like this, which is the way kids might um, colour in. Having said that, it depends totally on your technique and what you want to do because it's, there's nothing wrong at all with scribbling and a lot of my sketches are like that. So it just depends on the final look. So holding the pencil has a lot to do with that. Also, if and I tell my kids this quite a lot because it takes them forever sometimes when they're doing large areas and they're doing this. If you want, you can hold the pencil like this and hold it on flat on its side and you can put so much more pigment down faster and then if you want to have this kind of effect you can go on top of that wherever there's little white spaces and and fill it in now colored pencil and um, in this way it is a time consuming media a lot of people really don't realize that um to get realistic effects or to get the the layers that you want to get it takes a lot of time building up those layers properly again of course it depends what way you want to do it but anyway, so that's just to show you how you hold the pencil. Um, so here I'm going to show you that you can actually use um, erasers with coloured pencil. Now it's, I'm just going to try and find this one. It is quite hard to, if I try and erase some of this red here, it's just, just a standard pencil or eraser, sorry. And I forgot to bring my brush to clean off the shavings or the, the rubbings. But as you can see, it's really difficult to erase the pigment completely off the paper. That's something that you need to bear in mind. Um, especially for pigments like red, they tend to stain the paper um, a wee bit. But what you can do is, this is an elect um, um, a battery operated eraser by Derwent. And what you can do is actually use the eraser to make as part of your artwork. So if I put this on and try and make stripes in it, piece that I've drawn earlier. You see, you, you get a quite a nice decorative effect there and you could use that and um, incorporate that into a, as being part of your finished piece. You can also kind of maybe use it to clean up the edges. I think with the battery operator the razor it's kind of easier to get more of the pigment off the page, but again, not completely. You can still, still see like part of the color there. Um, so let's talk about blending more than one colour. Um, many artists um, use up to 20 layers or more perhaps um, of coloured pencil and I, I've used lots of different layers too. This is just a quick layer I put down of this um, yellow ochre that's one of the Caran Dash Luminance pencils and I'm going to put um, a blue and I'm actually going to use a different make. I'm going to use Fiber Castell, a polychromo on top of this because you can use different um, makes together and they're both wax, uh, sorry, oil based pencils so this should work. Um, so again I'm going to be holding my pencil like this and I'm going to put it over the, the layer that I have down before. Now I'm pressing really lightly and another thing that I forgot to say earlier when I was talking about this is the farther up the barrel you hold the pencil the less, the lighter the pressure it's going to be. I mean, you probably can hardly see any pigment going down there, but it is going down. And it's much safer to do that than start to press really hard at the beginning. So you keep rotating the pencil. If you want to do this technique with these little small, small circular movements, you have to have a, a sharp point on your pencil. That's really important. So um, it's worth investing in a really good sharpener, which I think I talked about in another one of my videos. 
So as you can see, as I said before, this takes um, time and I'm probably not doing this as carefully as I would be if I was doing a, um, a proper artwork. But you get the idea. So you can build up lots and lots and lots of layers with coloured pencil. The paper that you use also will make a difference. This is Strathmore vellum paper, so it's got a bit of a nice uh, surface to it. But you can start to see now. I'm not going to fill in the whole square, but you get to see how that works. And I could put another colour on top of that, and another colour, and another colour. So, um, another way you can blend. Now, you can just use the pencils and cells to blend, but some people will use actual blenders and, and burnishers. And I think I mentioned these two in another video. Um, I, I rarely use these. I've had these for years, and to be honest, I don't use them very much, as you can tell. But this is a blender. Um, this is just the filler that's in any, um, I would imagine, Derwent's pencils are nearly all wax based. So it's the same filler, but there's no pigment in it. So this just helps to blend. You maybe can't see that very well, but it is very subtly blending them together. And what that's doing is filling up the white spaces of the paper. And I would probably need my wee brush there to, to tidy that up. They also have um, a burnisher. So maybe I'll take the uh, Caran Dash Luminance. I'm not going to do this kind of technique because it just takes too long. So I'm going to kind of do it a wee bit looser and scribble down a wee bit more just for the sake of time. I would maybe take more time to do that, but anyway. Um, so this is a, a, a burnisher. Um, I think this is probably pretty much, it seems, it, I don't really know what this is made of, it seems harder and waxier. Burnishing just mainly, really means when you're pressing hard down with something. It also blends in the colour, but if you press really hard, it flattens out the tooth of the paper. It blends everything in. You can do this over several layers as well. And if you press really hard, you maybe can't see it in this video, but it kind of sometimes brings up a kind of a a shine, a sheen, and I've seen people do this whenever they're painting or drawing. Well, it really is kind of like painting. The effect that they get um, cherries, apples, and, and other fruits, things like that. I don't particularly like to have a really shiny effect, but that it just depends what you want and what you're trying to achieve. Something else that I use um, quite a lot in my work is um, an embosser. Again, you can get these Derwent cell little sets. I'm sure other brands do them too. You don't actually need this. Any sharp instrument will do, but if it's very sharp, you can obviously tear the page. So this has got like a little blunt um, ball and there's different, I think you get two of these in the set with different, uh, different size heads on them. So if I, for example, do like a leaf shape here and you're just pressing down hard on the paper it helps to have the light at an angle so you can kind of see what you're doing. So you're pressing into the paper with that and I'll just use the red again. And I'll just, I'll go on the flat of the pencil just for the sake of time again. So you, you can see that the white of the paper shows through and you get a nice effect. I use the embosser to sign my work as well, so I'll probably sign it at the beginning before I start putting all the layers, otherwise I would forget. And you can also put down a layer of color, emboss into that layer, and then put another layer of color on top of that. So instead of the white of the paper showing through, it's the first color that you put down. Okay, so going back to blending then, if I just uh, use this color again, and I'll just put down a quick, um, I'm not worrying too much about this for the sake of time, but if I put that down um, and then some yellow ochre again over it, this is very rough, you can take your time when you're doing these, but you can use um, solvent with coloured pencils to blend them. You can buy several pens, this is Prismacolor, which is the American brand, or you can get Dermot have two of these. Um, just be careful because the, the clear nib, it, it stains. So you have to clean it off, which I obviously didn't do the last time. Otherwise it will stain the work that you're working on. But anyway, this is just like a solvent and 
and you can blend instead of using pencils or the burnish or whatever you can actually use solvent to blend it and um, some artists do this at the beginning when they want to put layers down to save them time and then they'll build up other layers on top of it and, and that's an interesting um, thing to do um, I'm just going to show you some of the art sticks this is remember I mentioned in another video about Prismacolor um, they also sell these um, they're called art sticks they're basically just the exact same filler that's in a pencil in the form of it it looks like a hard pastel so it's a woodless um, there's no wood in it it's just it's just the entire the, the, the filler with the pigment and you can use these like castles you can break them and you can use them on their side these are Prismacolor and I actually prefer these to their pencils which I did mention in another video that the core tends to break and it's often not centered and there's all kinds of problems but um, these you can use these um, and you get the creaminess of the Prismacolor pencil which I like without the issues of the point breaking but you can use them as you would a color pencil, put it down on its side, fill in spaces um, further you can you know you can get quite expressive marks with these um, and then you could go in with a pencil if you wanted on top of that um, and, and, and put in a bit more detail whatever. Um, some people will do lots and lots of scribbles like this with these build up um, lots of areas and then they'll keep going like this and then you can you can blend those together or what you could do is you could um, put down a really heavy layer on top of that and you could try um, Scraffito with your embossing tool I'm not sure if this is going to work but we'll see not really what other people do is they will, um, if I can just find this, but it might not work, is they can put down, this is a shop bought stencil, I prefer to make my own, but you can get some um, solvent and just dip it in a in some cotton wool and, and try and, and lift the top layer that you put down. It doesn't always um, work. But you get some interesting effects and it's not kind of your typical colored pencil look and it's kind of a bit more painterly if you know what i mean so it's just worth experimenting with these things and seeing what you can do with them um so see if i don't know if you get the idea there so that that's quite interesting on a large scale if you were doing I don't know if you wanted, I, mean, I use pattern a lot in my work so that's quite interesting for me and again when that dries you can go in with your coloured pencil and tidy up any edges and you know fix it, do whatever. So there's lots of different things that you can do. I'm talking about solvent, I actually um, put some in this, uh, I think I, got, I can't remember where I got this but it's, um, I think it's supposed to be used for making monoprint so you can fill this with ink. But I actually filled it with solvent so that um, I can, you know, use it that way to to mix things in. Now here there's obviously too much solvent for the amount of pigment that's there, but that's just to show you that you can use different things to apply the solvent. You can also um, use cotton wool buds, or the Americans call them Q-tips, and you can put these in. Um, And that makes a completely different look um, rather than taking pigment away it's kind of just it, it's the way uh, if you're using water soluble work water soluble products um, pencils whatever and you add water to them it's a similar effect so you can make stripes here you could make different patterns lots of different things that you can do so um, I hope that this has been of some use um, to you. If you have any questions please don't uh, hesitate to ask me in the comments section and if you like this please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Um, you can see my work at www.judithloganart.com. I'm also on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, I sell prints and small originals in Folksy just recently um, on Etsy and um, if you have any questions just please get in touch. Thanks for watching. Bye.